Hey guys, welcome back to the channel. We are once again in front of the EG4 solar heat pump. If you're new around here, this is a solar powered heat pump that I run basically year round to heat and cool my house. Um, I feel like I have to say this in every video now because I have a lot of new viewers coming through and only about 10% of you are subscribed. So if you're not subscribed, hit that button, stay updated on this project. I keep adding different uh, aspects as we go. So I primarily make HVAC videos, but I'm getting into the solar side of things with this unit and uh, people seem to be enjoying it. So I'm gonna keep making content on this and uh, let me know what you think. So that's my shed. Um, in the last video, I showed you my house solar system. In this video, we're gonna be upgrading that system for more power and I'm gonna be putting it in the shed for now just to test everything out, make sure everything's working uh, kind of how I want it before I pull out the house system and put the new system in the house, uh, just so I still have my backup. So I'll take you inside now and show you. So this is my in-house system. I have 200 amp hour batteries. This is a 12 volt system. That's a little uh, 1000 watt Renogy inverter in the back. Basically the solar comes into this box right here, goes through the breaker, goes through the charge controller, and then down into the batteries. So I've got a little 100 amp fuse, like I said, a 1000 watt inverter. That's where the new inverter is gonna go, but for now we're gonna uh, put it in the shed <clears throat> until I show you everything. Um, it is fused in that little disconnect box on the right, and then it goes to the household wiring, which goes out to the air conditioner. So um, once again, I'm gonna get everything kind of ironed out, see how many batteries I want in the main system before I haul this out, and we'll go from there. So this is the new inverter. This is the MPP LV2424. It's a 24 volt, 2400 watt inverter, and we're gonna be mounting it out here in the shed. This is the solar input. I have a single 290 watt panel on the roof. Um, and the idea is we're going to run an extension cord to the AC just for now um, to power it up, see how things work. So that's my solar panel. Um, I'm going to get things kind of put up on the wall here and then we'll start doing the connections and um, hopefully everything works out. These are the same Redoto batteries as the last video. I'm going to be hooking these up in series today for 24 volts. Okay, I've got the batteries almost all connected. We are fused up here. This is number two gauge cable. Uh, like I said, almost all the way hooked up. I haven't done the negative yet because I don't want the spark. I just want to mention these Windy Nation cables. Uh, if you're looking for battery cables, check out Windy Nation. These are on Amazon, uh, but they're not actual, you know, cheap Chinese Amazon branded cables. These are American made. They're super nice, really flexible. There's no way I would have made that little bend to the fuse on uh, the Amazon cables. They're really stiff, hard to deal with. These ones are a lot nicer. So if you need cables, check out Windy Nation for sure. Not sponsored, just really nice cables. Um, I want to show you a quick trick. I know a lot of people when they go to connect their final connection here, you get the big spark from the inverter because it's charging up those capacitors all at once. So everyone recommends the pre-charge resistor. I don't have a pre-charge resistor, but I have found a little trick that works uh, with a big spool of wire. So I have this little 18 gauge um, thermostat wire. <clears throat> it's probably about 200 feet. And I found that running the uh, running the inverter power through that actually has enough resistance that it doesn't give you the spark. I'm not sure if it's great for the wire, but it takes away that big spark, which damages your cables. You know, puts the big arc, uh, the big arc marks in your terminal bolts. So basically, all you do is put one end to the top of the wire here, put the other end to the battery, and you get no spark. So definitely better than beating up your terminal bolts uh, and your battery terminals with arc marks so try that out if you have wire laying around it's a good trick instead of buying that pre-charged resistor i don't have one so thought i'd share that Okay, we're all connected to the Redoto battery bank here. I'm gonna turn this thing on. 
This is only the second time I've actually turned this inverter on, so you're going to be checking it out with me. Looks like we're sitting at around 26.6 volts. Obviously, we have no input coming in. We're not connected yet. It takes a minute for the inverter to start actually inverting, so there we go. Yeah, that was pretty straightforward. We, uh, we could start running it as is, but we got to hook up this solar so we're able to charge. This is just a little connector I made. I've got two MC4s on one end going through an XT90. Uh, this is 10 gauge. We're going to plug them in here on the inverter. I think I just need to strip these back a little bit and we'll get them installed. So apparently as soon as you hook up the solar, this thing just turns on. Um, not the inverter side, but the MPPT side, which uh, I guess makes sense. It's going to charge even if you have the inverter off. So uh, this is one of the reasons I wanted to have it out in the shed. It's a little bit loud, so I just want to make sure the fans are going to be appropriate volume to have inside. And uh, we'll decide from there kind of what I want to do with this thing. But for now, it looks like it's working good. So we'll get the um, output side of things hooked up. We've got to hook up the, the 120 volts out, do a little outlet box with the breaker. Um, get that all set up. Well, I started doing the output side uh, of the inverter, but I got distracted by the solar wires here. So tidied those up a little bit. Um, now I'm going to get to doing the 120 volts out. All right, well, I kind of got into a bit of a rush here and I didn't really film any of this. Like I said, just want to get it done before the sun goes down, but this is our output side. Uh, we have some cable coming off the inverter. Just realized I didn't clamp this down. Cable comes off the inverter into this little fuse disconnect box. Uh, we have a 15 amp fuse in there and then just running to a standard 120 volt outlet. That's all I'm gonna do for now. Um, just a pretty simple output so we can hook up different things. Uh, try out the air conditioner for a little bit and go from there. This is not gonna be where this system lives permanently so I don't wanna put a, a ton of time into the output side, but. Um, yeah, I guess we're pretty much ready to try out the air conditioner. As you can see, it's just back there. So I'm going to run the extension cord out there, get things hooked up. We'll turn it on, kind of see how the inverter handles it. <clears throat> Obviously, it should should be able to handle it no problem. It's got a ton of power compared to my old one. So get it all plugged in, and we'll fire up the AC. Okay, so we've got the extension cord hooked up to the AC. It's kind of been raining on and off here. I've had to dodge the rain during half of this project, but we've got the extension cord running down the side of the yard into the shed. Now, obviously this is just temporary. Like I said, I just want to try this out for a little bit. So uh, we're going to fire up the output side here. I do have the inverter on, on the inverter side, not just the MPPT side, still making a little bit of power. So we're going to turn on this disconnect, just verify we have 120 volts. Uh, everything is correct before I plug the AC into it. And we do have a perfect 120 volts. Sorry for the lighting here, it's pretty much sunset. But I think we're good to go. We'll plug in the AC, uh, I'll go turn it on in the house. It takes a few minutes to fire up and then we'll check back with the inverter. Okay, the AC is coming up to speed. Looks like we're pulling around 350 watts, 11 amps off the battery side. The solar is making up for the rest of it at this moment. So far, so good. No weird sounds, no weird smells. Check the amperage off the battery. So we're doing about 17 amps off the battery. Some of that is accounting for um, the actual load of the inverter and the inefficiency as it runs through. So that seems pretty close to accurate. Going up to almost 400 watts. And 16% of the inverter's capacity is going to that AC. So 
Obviously, this is going to be a big improvement over my little 1,000 watt. Uh, that thing did actually trip a couple times uh, when I was trying to run the AC. Just if the shade would, the sun would go away, the clouds would come out. Sometimes that thing would trip if the AC had a high load on it. So this will be a big improvement. As you can see, the fan is running. He sees chugging along. Everything sounds happy. I'll show you the... Uh, app here for a minute so we're doing 400 watts ac input 60 watts from solar like i said losing our sun so this is where uh, the whole idea for this project came i just want to be able to run this thing past sunset cool the house down a little bit more in the evenings so um yeah as long as this works good i will move this whole system into the basement maybe add a battery or two uh at least two because it's 24 volts so uh so far so good Well, everything is looking really good so far. I'm probably gonna let this run uh, totally off grid for the next day or two, and then I'll check back in with you. But so far, I'm really happy with it. Uh, I gotta say a big thanks to Rodoto once again. I will have a link to their Amazon page. I have a coupon code if you guys wanna check out the batteries. Um, once again, these are the 100 amp hour version. They do have the self heating, and they also have the smaller version now. This is kind of the standard version, but uh, these are working great. So this will be a nice little upgrade. Um, I do need to sort of look into this inverter a little bit more. I haven't fully learned all the settings. These are really customizable. So you can add utility input. Uh, you can set low voltage cutoffs. So if, if the battery gets uh, lower than, than you'd like, you can have the utility come in and bypass the inverter. Mm -hmm. You can run straight mm -hmm. off the grid. There's a number of different things you can do. So I really need to learn uh, some of the ins and outs, get that thing dialed in, move this system into the house after we make sure it's all flawless and uh, we'll go from there. So I'll check back in with you in a day or two. Hey guys, it's been a couple days since I checked in. So far everything is going well with the shed system. Uh, as you can see here, it's almost 5 o'clock. We're still running mostly on solar with a little bit of AC input. I finally dug out this old tablet. I couldn't find it for the longest time, but I thought this would be a little bit easier to show you rather than making you watch the horizontal screen recordings every time. So um, as you can see, I still have the cord running to the AC. Everything's been doing good, even though it's been kind of cloudy, rainy the last couple days. Um, as you can see, today is not a whole lot better. Not a lot of sun on these panels, but so far everything's been holding up. Um, I'll probably let it run another hour or two here. Wait till we lose a little more sun. Maybe that green icon turns off and then we'll head out to the shed. Um, check out the voltage, check out uh, how the inverter is doing, and that'll pretty much wrap it up for this project. So I'll give it about an hour, hour and a half and I'll check back in. All right, it's almost 6.30. Uh, you can see here we are still running a little bit on solar, but we've switched mostly to AC input, which is also now solar, but it's coming from the shed. So AC is still chugging along nice and cool in here. Um, had a little bit of sun in between uh, 4.30 and 6.30, but for the most part, still kind of a cloudy day. So uh, yeah, we'll go out to the shed, check on the system, and pretty much wrap it up. Twenty six point two is actually the lowest I've seen it in a few days. It's uh, usually hanging out around the twenty six five mark, doing about three hundred and seventy five watts right now. Okay, well, as far as the new inverter goes, everything seems to be working really well. Pretty happy with how this turned out. So. I think in one of the next videos I will move this into the house, uh, make it the main system, definitely do a video on it, so keep an eye out for that. I just need to figure out a way to add more solar. My pergola is pretty much full of panels, so I'll have to figure something out, but uh, 
Once again, just want to say thanks to Rodoto for sending out the batteries for this video. Greatly appreciated. As always, thanks for watching. I'll catch you in the next video, and don't forget to subscribe.